Alright, well, let's go a bit of crossover, obviously. Um, well, I'm basically just going to talk about journalism or the lack of journalism in North Korea. Uh, just a quick overview is around 25 million people. The leader is Kim Jong-un, and the capital is unpronounceable. It's a single party state, and it's technically the Democratic People's Republic of North Korea. It is pretty much the worst of the worst. Um, it's not free. It's, it's uh, one off the bottom and it's been there for years. And that's basically because of the use of political camps, the fact that they will willingly uh, detain any foreign journalists. Um, and the fact that there, there is only like, in terms of media, there's just the state, um, state newspaper and then everything else like pirate. Um, news organisations is fully suppressed. Uh, okay, I just said that. Um, there's a case of this guy called Page on Ho, um, but he's known because uh, he's a US citizen. He's known as Kenneth Bay. Um, he was basically um, undercover. We saw the, the uh, panorama from the BBC. And he was undercover in uh, North Korea, taking pictures of stolen children. Um, to try to promote the fact that there is quite severe poverty in North Korea. Um, and he was detained and sentenced to 15 years for something called a grave crime, which is basically North Korea's um, way of saying that there's no real justification to imprison this person, but they're going to do it anyway. Um, pretty much all journalists have to toe the party line, as is common with most communist states. Um, and anybody who doesn't is seen as attempting to overthrow the government using the media. Um, and US officials are just calling for his immediate release, but I have no idea whether he's still there or not. Um, here's a f further list of uh, US citizens who have been jailed. We've got the Laura Lynn and the Nelly, which I talked about. Um, and this is coupled with nuclear tensions, the fact that North Korea will provoke South Korea quite a lot with their, um, you know, their military, the fact that they've got a nuclear program and the fact that there's a lot of tension between them and America, because uh, America pretty much, as we all know, doesn't like other people having nuclear weapons. Um, and Reports Without Borders commented on North Korea saying in dictatorships, journalists and their families are exposed to gross reprisals. So it's not just the journalists that's get, that uh, get sent to political prison camps, it's their families, it's their children, um, it's their parents. So it's a real deterrent to try and go against the regime. It's almost impossible to say how many people are in a political prison camp. Um, it's estimated that around 200,000 are in a political prison camp. Um, there are something like 25 dotted around North Korea. Um, there have been various pleas um, to free, uh, to, to free uh, everybody in a political prison camp. It's just inhumane, people are tortured, uh, people are killed, death penalty is still there. Um, and uh, pretty much it has to take a massive intervention from someone at the US, uh, for instance, Bill Clinton coming or other presidents, uh, ex-presidents coming for people to actually be released from the prison camps. Um, but it's difficult to comment on North Korea because it's so recluse, um, you can't actually say what it's like in North Korea, um, because it's like almost impossible to go in there and actually um, see what it's like, but there's, there's absolutely no whistleblowing from the media. It must all be pro-party. Um, Vera went over like New Zealand and how free it is. Um, it, North Korea basically, if you're going to think of it, is the complete opposite of New Zealand. The fact that journalists barely, journalism barely exists as a profession in North Korea. That's my sources. That's it. Okay, thank you.